Pollination is something we often take for granted and undermine its importance of. Recently, bee colonies all over the world seem to die off without reason. Beekeepers dubbed this phenomenon the colony collapse disorder. And because of this, we became aware that bees are responsible for over 15 billion worth of crops every year. And without their help, we could be in big trouble. That's why I'd like to talk about humans, animals, and plants, and how pollination affects all of us. Pollination is no new knowledge to us. As we see from above, the bee's role directly affects our ability to produce crops. It's a small but significant part of our lives. A typical 10-year-old could tell you what pollination looks like in their garden. Butterflies and bees traveling from flower to flower, which is mostly accurate, as pollination is the act of spreading pollen from one flower to another, with the goal of producing offspring. This natural process may seem to contribute only to a small part of our life, lives, but I'd argue that the significance is much larger than that. Pollination has shaped the very way we have evolved, and we in turn have shaped pollination of the present age. Unlike us, plants are at a disadvantage when it comes to mating. Because they're restricted to the ground, they're unable to actively search for mates. To help spread their gametes, plants have instead evolved to persuade insects to do it for them, which is essentially pollination. They have sweet nectar for the insects to feed on, then the pollen is rubbed onto them as they feed. Their relationship is transactional, allow by allowing the insects to feed on their nectar, then the plants are able to produce, reproduce. This relationship is known as coevolution, in which two species coexist together and help each other, and therefore have evolved to uh, interact with each other for survival. As seen from under a UV lamp, which is how a bee would see it, Flowers have colorful nectar guides, which help attract insects and other animals. Some of the most e amazing examples of coevolution in the natural world would be the bee orchid and the coca plant. The bee orchid has evolved to have flowers that look and smell like female bees in heat, so that when a male bee comes to mate with the flower, they get rubbed all over with pollen. Then the confused bee continues to fly off to another flower. Another example would be the coca plant, which has evolved to have flowers so small that not even a bee can pollinate it, and the only animal that does is this dust-like fly. You may be wondering, what's the significance of this? Why should you care about a process that helps plants reproduce? But I can't emphasize enough how much plants have helped humans develop over the past 10,000 years. In layman terms, I'm talking about agriculture. Somewhere in between 9,000 to 25,000 BC marks the first time that humans were able to domesticate plants and animals. Humans discovered breeding animals and growing crops as an alternative to hunting and foraging. Alongside the development of domestication, humans were also able to give up their nomadic nature and set up permanent settlement. Quickly, the majority of humans turned to farming instead of hunting because it required a lot less energy and allowed them to have a reliable food source. Compared to the fishing village, the only other alternative for a semi-permanent settlement, farms were a lot more stable. It can be said that pollination is the basis for agriculture. By allowing the plants to uh, produce seeds, meant that the same species could be intentionally grown year after year in the same space. And with a long-term so uh, and with a long-term source of food available, humans were able to give up their hunting culture and gain more time to spend with their community. More intellectual thought came to be as humans began to use their imagination more and more frequently and cultures began to develop because there was more meaningful social interaction. Prior to this, nature had never experienced this sort of intentional development. People were caring for plants, whereas before, all plants had to fight for their own resources. For example, not all plants were given the opportunity to be pollinated and pass down their genes. And unlike many other plant species that have gone extinct in the prehistoric age, several have been protected and maintained by the persistent care of humans. To maximize our ability to feed ourselves, we, deliver, we developed preliminary methods of manipulating nature such as to increase our food production by allowing plants with higher yields and desired traits to grow more, while the plants with less desirable traits to stop reproducing. We were interfering with natural selection by selectively breeding plants that were ne not necessarily adapted well for the environment, but good for us. 
From this point onwards, I will refer to a well-known fruit, the apple, to talk about the progression of agriculture. John Chapman, better known as John Appleseed, was known as a saint, a hobo, a nature spirit from the many mixed recounts of the villagers that he met. In his age, he was the primary agent to help spread apples all over America. He did so by traveling from village to village and planting the seeds of his best apple trees, selectively planting grooves. Later on, apples were largely adopted as America's primary source of alcohol, which is being cider. To make, it more, to, make, to make this more accessible, people began to further innovate and eventually learned how to clone apples. They took a branch of a desirable tree and attached it to another tree, and by letting it grow, it would produce that desirable apple as well. This process is called grafting. You may realize that we now no longer need the process of pollination and plant cultivation because now we have more other modern methods. And as seen from the present day, we still continue to use grafting. But now we have even more advanced technology, which allows us to do micropropagation, which is also kind of like grafting, but on a large scale in a lab and no need for a tree for the branch to grow on. The etymology of the word domesticate comes from the medieval Latin word domesticus, which means to tame or to bring home. It's quite funny to think that agriculture is a process of humans taking control of the plants, seeing as how much care and resources that are demanded of us from the plants. It's almost as we are, it almost seems as if we are the benefactors of these plants that we have conquered. Just think of commercial farming, a farming that is done on a wide scale level all over the world to meet the high demands of particular crops. At present, almost 11% almost of all land is used for agriculture and 70% of fresh water is used for irrigation. This is somewhat the consequences of selective breeding. We chose the plants not well adapted to the environment and now we must put extra effort to take care of them. It is no doubt that without agriculture, the current population would not be able to feed itself. Technological innovation for crops first began in the Green Revolution during the 1950s, when wheat was mod genetically modified to have larger heads. And because of that, we were able to pass by the global scale famine without any problem. At this point, pollination has almost become redundant. Since, te since technology has allowed to transcend beyond the laws of nature. If a plant was susceptible to some disease, then we can just modify it to have, we can just modify it to have protective genes. And if we recall the basic principle of every living thing, it is to produce offspring in this sense, then we are helping the plants by becoming invincible and allowing them to survive. We may have replaced natural processes with technology and achieved the impossible by doing so, but interfering with the natural order has some serious consequences. The apple we so love has been selectively bred to an extent where there is only 24 of the best breeds remaining. The range of biodiversity has significantly narrowed compared to what it was before. In Germany, it is said that over 3,000 of species of traditional apples are quickly falling in numbers. Monoculture combined with cloning makes all domesticated plant species a lot less biodiverse and susceptible to natural factors. Today, we yield the technology able to change the very genetic makeup of an organism. Over generations, we have made a lasting impact on our crops. Our relationship with these crops over the last 1,000 years has definitely had their positives and negatives. And so, to develop a healthier relationship with our crops, we must be careful with what steps we choose to take next.